Early this morning, Firefly Aerospace shared some of the first images they captured of a solar eclipse that happened overnight. This marked the first time in history a commercial company was actively operating on the moon and able to observe a total solar eclipse where the Earth blocks the sun and casts a shadow on the lunar surface. In addition to these images, we also got a new video of the landing using some of NASA's onboard cameras. Here I'll go more in depth into the solar eclipse, landing video, the next few days, and more. Very early in the morning, at around 1 a.m. Eastern Time, the eclipse started and would last close to five hours. Within that window, from the landing side in Mary Chrysium, they were expecting approximately two hours and 16 minutes of totality, which in this case refers to the time when Earth fully covered the sun's bright face. The first image, captured by Blue Ghost, was taken about 30 minutes into the start of the eclipse and the moments leading up to totality. While there doesn't appear to be anything blocking the sun, if you look at the top deck of the lunar lander instead, it shows a different picture. Here you can see a glowing ring of light emerge and the reflection of its solar panel as Earth begins to block the sun. This photo, taken from the lander's top deck, also shows the X-band antenna on the left, the lunar environment heliospheric X-ray imager in the center, and the lunar magnetotelluric sounder mast on the right. Interestingly, when Firefly released this image, they noted that they were hoping to downlink more images soon once their X-band antenna warms up from the cool temperatures faced in the darkness of totality. In other words, just a few days earlier, temperatures were getting as high as 250 degrees Fahrenheit or 121 degrees Celsius, and during totality that completely changed. The second image released was captured a few hours after the first, this time the sun was emerging from totality. The picture gives a much better look at the eclipse, with Earth nearly completely blocking the sun. Here you can see the diamond ring effect with the edge of the sun beginning to make its way past the Earth. For context, Firefly Aerospace landed on the moon with its Blue Ghost lander nearly two weeks ago on March 2nd. In a statement they said, Although not a mission requirement, Firefly hopes to image the eclipse and potentially operate NASA instruments to measure changes in the lunar environment from our unique vantage point on the moon. They also pointed out that capturing this footage requires Blue Ghost to rely on its batteries for power rather than its solar panels, creating a challenge to image during the darkness of the eclipse. That being said, they definitely were able to get some great views. The final set of images they released today were arguably the best. Here they took multiple images and stitched them together in a short clip. You can see the sun get dimmer and dimmer before it all goes black. In a statement, Firefly said that the red hue is the result of sunlight refracting through the Earth's atmosphere as the sun is blocked by our planet, casting a shadow on the lunar surface. Taking a closer look at the video, again you can see the eclipse and the reflection of the lander's solar panel which slowly fades until there isn't any light left. These specific images were captured around 3.30 a.m. Eastern Time during totality. They also were captured by the top deck camera and Firefly noted that they were taken with different exposure settings before being stitched together. For reference, yesterday after Blue Ghost got through the heat of lunar noon, Firefly noted that the X-band antenna was downlinking again at 10 megabits per second in order to transmit science data for NASA. With the eclipse blocking practically all light for a few hours and the sun not far from setting, it's getting harder for the lander to operate and send data at all times. Even still, over the next few days, we can hope to receive more photos from the company. Besides the lunar eclipse, we also got a new video with four different angles of the landing. Specifically, a team at NASA's Langley Research Center captured imagery with the stereo cameras for Lunar Plume Surface Studies, or SCALPS instrument, integrated on Firefly's Blue Ghost Lunar Lander. The cameras took the images during Blue Ghost's final descent, showing engine plumes interacting with the moon's surface. The four short focal-length cameras were each capturing photos at 8 frames per second during the descent and landing. The sequence, using approximate altitude and data, begins roughly 91 feet or 28 meters above the surface. In a statement, NASA said, the descent images show evidence that the onset of the interaction between the Blue Ghost reaction control thruster plumes and the surface begins at roughly 49 feet or 15 meters. As the descent continues, the interaction becomes increasingly complex, with the plumes vigorously kicking up lunar dust, soil, and rocks, collectively known as regolith. After touchdown, the thrusters shut off and the dust settles. The lander levels a bit, and the lunar terrain beneath and immediately around it becomes visible, they said. Looking at these new angles, for the final 10 seconds or so, you can roughly sync the video with the camera toward the top of Blue Ghost that gave us the original landing angle. Together, they highlight the distance from the surface and how the regolith interacts with the engines as it makes the final approach. What's clear is that NASA is very happy with all this data. Rob Maddock, the SCALPS project manager, was quoted saying, Although the data is still preliminary, the 3,000 plus images we captured appear to contain exactly the type of information we were hoping for. It'll be used in order to better understand plume surface interaction and learn how to accurately model the phenomenon based on the number, size, thrust, and configuration of the engines. The data is vital to reducing risk in the design and operation of future lunar landers, as well as surface infrastructure that may be in the vicinity. 
We have an absolutely amazing team of scientists and engineers, and I couldn't be prouder of each and every one of them, he said. In total, the Scalp's 1.1 technology includes six cameras, four short focal length and two long focal length. The long focal length cameras allow the instrument to begin taking images at a higher altitude, prior to the onset of the plume surface interaction, to provide more accurate before and after comparison on the surface. Using a special technique, the team will later combine the overlapping images, one set from the long focal length cameras, another from the short focal length, to create 3D digital elevation maps of the surface. In an animation provided by NASA, it highlights the arrangement of these six cameras and the instrument's data storage unit. The cameras are integrated around the base of the Blue Ghost lunar lander. NASA was quoted saying, The instrument is still operating on the moon, and as the light and shadows move during the long lunar day, it'll see more surface details under and immediately around the lander. The team also hopes to capture images during the transition to lunar night to observe how the dust responds to the change. It'll take the team several months to fully process the data from the Blue Ghost landing. They plan to issue raw images publicly through NASA's planetary data system within six months. The next version of this tech is undergoing thermal vacuum testing at NASA Langley ahead of a late March delivery to Blue Origin, they said. As far as what to expect in the next few days with Blue Ghost, the mission is coming to an end. NASA and Firefly Aerospace only plan for a mission duration of 14 days, which would mean the last day is March 16th. That's because the sun will set, and the lander, in theory, will run out of power. When Blue Ghost touched down, it was around the start of the lunar day, which lasts 14 Earth days. That now is coming to an end. That being said, we've seen other landers in the past actually survive the lunar night, so we'll have to see exactly what happens to Blue Ghost. Either way, the mission has basically been perfect from both NASA and Firefly's perspective. From launch to landing and now today, each of the lander's payloads have been able to conduct science and different surface operations as intended. A good sign for the company in future Blue Ghost missions. Already there's a second mission planned. Firefly was awarded two additional NASA Commercial Lunar Payload Services task orders to provide payload services in lunar orbit and on the lunar surface in 2026. Unlike the first mission, the second will utilize a two-stage spacecraft configuration with Firefly's Blue Ghost Lunar Lander stacked on an Elytra dark orbital vehicle. The Elytra vehicle will first deploy Blue Ghost and the European Space Agency's Lunar Pathfinder satellite in lunar orbit. The company will then touch down on the far side of the moon and operate government and commercial payloads for more than 10 days on the surface, something to look forward to in the future. Thanks to the Blue Ghost lunar lander, we were able to view a lunar eclipse from the moon's surface. They also released more views of the landing, showing the interaction with the lunar regolith and the state of the vehicle. In all likelihood, even more images will be released in the near future as they continue to receive data. We will have to wait and see how it progresses and the impact it has on the space industry. Thank you very much for watching.